What's up, folks? Welcome to Gideon's Tactical and welcome to this episode. I'm really excited today to do this review for you on the KHC, that's the Karen Hood Chopper from CRKT. And today I'm going to have my sisters helping me out. <laughs> so uh, the reason for that and the reason I invited my sister to kind of help me out today is this knife was designed by Karen Hood, the wife of now deceased but legendary not only knife maker but survivalist Ron Hood. So it's from a female's mind and I wanted to get some female perspective as well as my own in this chopper. And we're going to talk about both pros and cons. There's some awesome design features I love in it. There's some big kind of like Death Star shadowing hangups that I have as well with this knife. So we're going to talk about all of that today. So let's go ahead, hand this off to my sisters who don't do this on a regular basis and see what they think about this knife designed by Karen Hood. Go Karen! Yourselves. And when you're done, what you say, what about you? Can I play my so, Hannah, what did you think of the KHC when you were chopping with it? Um, I liked the way I was chopping. It felt good in my hand. Um, the first half didn't really slip too much. Um, I had a good grip on it. The last half, I think, because I don't do this and I was fatigued, um, I had to readjust a bunch, but um, most part it was good. It didn't really irritate my hand. I don't have any red spots or blisters. Um, it feels really light, uh, it's not very heavy. Um, I mean, I've never done this before, but I didn't notice it being too heavy at all when I was using it. Um, when I was doing more detailed work, it was a lot more cumbersome. I didn't like that as well. I liked doing the chopping better with it. Sarah, what did you think about it when you were carving with it? I actually liked it when I was carving. It felt good in my hands. Um, it irritated me a little bit when I was chopping, got a little blister, but I've never done this before. Um, but I liked it when I was carving. It felt good in my hand. So folks, I alluded to a moment ago the fact that there is like the shadow of the Death Star of like impending doom over this video. And I want to get this portion out of the way because I believe the knife itself is has a lot of really good things going for it. This is the problem. When you go on Amazon, the day I'm reviewing this, this CRKT KHC is going for $225. I'm going to say it again, $225. We're getting a 9-inch 1095 USA made blade, 3 16ths of an inch thick, contoured micarta handle scales, very low cost, just get you by nylon sheath. Honestly, the knife needs a better either Kydex or leather sheath to come with it at that price point to make me even consider it because... I have here one of the, the biggest workhorses, favorite blades here at the channel, the Essie Hungalus. This thing is going to have... Uh, a, a 10 inch blade, USA made 1095 high carbon steel, car contoured my car handle scales, 316 of an inch thick, comes with one of the best production Kydex sheaths ever on the market produced. It's a buy it, forget it blade. And on Amazon, this goes for 160 all day long. And I will have links in the description below to both blades. So at the end of the video, if you're, you know, considering a large chopper, either using the SE Hunglas or, you know, after this video, if you're like, you know what, it doesn't, I don't care. I, I, the price isn't a factor to me. I want the KHC. Then uh, using those hyperlinks always helps support the channel. So there will be links below. But in comparison to these two knives, I mean, we're talking about a $60 difference with a shorter blade and a really subpar sheath. And I think back to recently, uh, you know, we just did the review uh, about a month ago on the American Knife Company Denali USA made A2 tool steel, USA made leather sheath, uh, and ambidextrous. Got a lot of things going for it. I think that's like 240 for the base model. So it's like $10 more. You're getting a higher quality steel, better sheath, and it's about the same weight and about the same size. 
So that's where I just have a really big hang up with this knife is the price point to justify going over $200 for a 1095 blade because I can't think of another one that comes in at that price point. I, I would want to see a really well done leather sheath or Kydex sheath to even consider it. This really should be coming in at about you know 160 to 175 would be doable and I wouldn't really have a problem with that. But the over 200 mark just makes it in a, a price point class where you can get better materials and better setup with sheath options and all of that. So just something to consider when we are going through this review that the, the knife price point is pretty steep and really should be uh, about $40 less to make it more competitive. And I want to do a brief shout out and thanks to Tim over at Everyday Tactical Vids. He and I did a trade so that I could review this knife. I had a knife he wanted. He had that knife, which is what I wanted to, to test out and review. So we did a test. Uh, I really appreciate him and just what he does, the quality of videos and his content is awesome. I'll have a link over to his channel below that you can go over there and check him out and see what he's doing. Uh, he has reviewed this knife already. You can hear his thoughts and uh, is just a great guy and gives you a lot of really good information. So I can't recommend that channel enough if you're interested in, uh, in more outdoor videos Tim does an awesome job all right this blade now obviously we have a recurve and some people have take issue you know with recurves I really don't uh, I have had great success with plenty of knives with recurves and as long as you have a good sharpening system my work sharp field sharpener um, as well as my work sharp guided sharpener both you know with ceramic rods and that type of stuff will maintain the overall sweep and then if I ever get a bad chunk out then you know you just use the stones right where the problem is to get that problem out and then you can use your ceramic rods again and leather straps to uh, get the edge back so with the the recurve that they decided to go with it gives you a huge power point right here for the chopping Definitely feels good chopping. Stay in the, stays in the hand really nice. I only had to reset like once or twice during that and I was just kind of able to scooch up a, a smidge like mid swing. I didn't have to stop even once to, to move my hand around to go through it, which is sweet. Definitely getting that nice little bit right there, eating in. And that's going to bite in really well. It's kind of a modified grind. They have a, a saber grind in the back end that goes into a full flat grind. So it does do a good job of biting in to wood, particularly again, if you connect right there for the chopping. And you know, this is the Karen Hood chopper. I mean, that's the name of the knife, so it better be able to chop. And it does surprisingly well for the weight class of being a pound. You know, for heavier choppers, like what we ran in, you know, the SE Hunglist, I mean, that's like a 22 ounce knife. Um, you know, this is very close to competing with it on your woods chopping and your hacking. So for being much less weight at a pound, you're getting a lot of power, obviously, a lot of blade length when you are spanning wood you know to do batoning and splitting wood that way did a great job had no issues with that and then finally because of the recurve you're getting really good slicing capability for how long and large the knife is so you can not only do I would say decent feather sticks for the size of knife better than most uh, in this size of nine inches I think again the SE Hungalus I think I'm thinking RTAC 2 I'm thinking the BK9 you know this in my mind is almost better at that because of the recurve and just how they've set up the handle with this really good designated um, finger choil. It's not a choil, but you know, the, the place, placement for your finger just gives you really good control for the finer tasks that you may need to do with a larger knife. So they've really thought through that whole system being, you know, 3 16 of an inch thick, I think is a great thickness. And, you know, they're giving you that really good edge, 1095, you can't complain, USA made. Uh, the, it, it really uh, is hitting 
a, a sweet spot for those of you who like recurve blades and are looking for a larger chopper, I think this is going to give you a lot of capability beyond just chopping and give you a really good, well-balanced feel in the hand as well. Regardless if it is for the finer stuff or you are doing more of the chopping and hacking, you're going to get a good feel in the hand and well-balanced blade as well as the performance. So as we discussed, I'm just going to run it in real fast. The nylon sheath is barely doable. You will want to upgrade. If you're going to spend this much money on a knife, you're going to want a custom leather or custom kydex, honestly. Uh, it is drop leg capable, which is kind of nice. But again, it's all overseas produced, you know, cheap nylon. And for the knife itself, the knife does not deserve that quality of sheath. All right, how about this handle? I got to tell you that they really did a good job of skeletonizing and contouring the heck out of this handle and I love this kind of gray black micarta in con uh, junction with the black coating that is on the blade very cool we got little white liners there really nice and contoured not blocky at all it doesn't feel clunky and obviously those huge holes so they've skeletonized this which really makes for a good balance of being just slightly blade heavy for a chopping uh, blade and then you know the balance point is basically right here at the guard so that's a really well-balanced knife and they did you know those cutouts obviously to help with that balance good sweep right here as well so when i'm locked into place and i'm doing my chopping task what i have is a really good deep groove so that kind of keeps me locked in for you know several several swings and then it's not going to want to come out and then as long as you do the thumb lanyard that we've talked about before that keeps your hand from ever sliding off the blade right there you just kind of keep your fingers locked in right there you've got really good power for a lot of good strokes and swings without any vibration in your hand no you know hot spots being created and then when we get to more of the finer cutting tasks even though this is a big blade at you know nine inches uh, they've balanced it well at right about a pound so that with that gr uh, really good finger groove for the front end i can get those really nice fine cuts in there i think that the uh, jimping right here is rather sharp and a little bit over overbuilt um, I would have liked to just see either no jimping or blocky jimping blocky jimping isn't too bad but this really kind of sharp stuff would be a problem normally but thankfully the way they design the handle is that when I do a push cut uh, and I put if I put my thumb up here then I don't even feel it my hand isn't even touching the jimping and then if I do a hammer grip same thing my hand isn't even touching the jimping so it's basically a useless piece right there but uh, it would have been nice just to have nothing um, there in my opinion but overall very good ergonomics for the style of blade and I don't really have any issues and gives you a lot of comfortability with the de design and the sweep of the overall handle well folks time to wrap this video up give you my final thoughts on the knife overall and you know if we forget about the price point and we forget about the sheath we have really an outstanding blade here that was really well executed that i think has a lot of capabilities and has the potential to be that lightweight larger survival knife which is really cool that it has those capabilities now obviously as we've discussed the price point is a big ding and the sheath is a big ding as well so it really comes down to if you're looking for a recurved one pound you know usa made blade and you're not really seeing anything else on the market that you're happy with then yeah okay uh you buy this knife it's going to serve you extremely well now if you're just looking for a larger chopper around that weight there are plenty of other stuff for much less uh, that are going to perform similar uh, so that's really kind of your call you've got to decide so that's why i'm kind of like 50 50. if it's just the knife and we're not talking about price uh, then awesome i mean it's a great performer but when we start looking at the sheath at the price and you're going to have to uh, spend even more money than the 220 that again it was when i'm filming this and prices hopefully will go down some hopefully it'll get down to like 180 would be much more reasonable uh, i am going to i'm planning for a while at least to keep this i'm going to probably put a kydex sheath on it because i like it that much you know and i don't invest that much much time and effort into a knife that I don't think is worth it um, but you know for the actual price itself man there's just so much competition that you could go for first and still spend less money with custom handles and sheath and stuff so very 50 50 on the overall package loving the knife itself guys so hopefully this video helps you out with your systems and whether or not the khc is going to fit inside the system that you're trying to build uh, for your outdoor adventures as always thank you so much for coming over here checking out the channel please subscribe comment like share this video love to hear your thoughts and as always remember stay equipped stay prepared and we'll see you out there